I am Vinny Turretin, folks. Here we are on the Friday show. That's right. Your good intentions have been stolen. But don't worry. I'm here to help you get them back. You may be soft and succulent when you start this journey, but hang in there before long. You will be lean and mean. Folks, I love when she comes on the Friday show. She's my second favorite Friday show person next to Nina Tai shows. And I'm talking about the beautiful Miss Anna Vocino. How are you doing, Pumpkin? I thought you were supposed to tell whoever is on the show that they're your favorite. Anna Vocino is my favorite in the world. And by the way, Thank Anna, you. You're, you got a mouthful of food mm -hmm. over there. What, what are you mm -hmm. doing? Yeah, what's that? I don't even want to cover it yeah. for the for the folks at home. I'm holding an ultra fat nut butter. Now, here's a here's a, here's an issue. The vanilla almond with coconut. Mm -hmm. I love it. Right. But my favorite is the one with the coffee in it. And you because don't have gone that one? because somebody in this household ate them who was explicitly told not to because he if he pure if he got them off the Internet, then he would be allowed to eat whatever flavor he wants. But he does not take that responsibility unto himself. I so see. he doesn't get to first dibs. Doesn't matter to him. He ate it anyway. So you're mad at your husband for eating. Mm hmm. Now, and do I have that right? Vinny, I'm an only child. Yeah, I, I, I can tell. You don't take my shit without That's getting it. a little bit of. You know, sass back at you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My dad was an only child. You guys are weird. I, I swear to God. There, there's now a video of my dad on the internet. Oh my God. I need to and see I, it. I watched, I watched the first eight minutes and I had to stop. They, they you know, no one's going to really watch it. Too close for home, too close to home. No, here's the thing. So, <laughs> by the way, folks, Anna's eating, uh, you know, ultra fat nut. My favorite is the end when all the yeah. salty stuff comes up. And Sometimes it the has salt a little... is at the top. That's why you got to squeeze the bag around a little bit, Anna. Yeah, squeeze it. I do around. it the way I want to do it. Again, Again only child. Only child. You only child. Not the boss no, we're, of me. we're gonna get into that right now in a second. Only child. Everybody go to NSNG Foods and order these. I've had these since the beginning, by the way. We're going on a year. Yeah. Of me eating pretty much 20 of these a month. <laughs> <laughs> I wish so I only good. ate 20 a month. I eat way more than They're that. They're so good. Yeah. Now I'm hiking a lot because Cotty Cot and I are going to do a little hiking this summer. Mm -hmm. So I've been going through them like just like water. OK, um, so okay, my my dad, my yeah. dad calls me, he tells yeah. me, he goes, hey, I'm on the YouTube. And I'm like, what are you doing on the YouTube? Now I'm, I'm worried. Right. I'm like, oh, boy, what did he do? Also, you're wondering if he said the correct tube. Yeah. I mean, you're, yeah, you're not sure. Yeah. Yeah, you know, last time mm -hmm. my dad mentioned tube, he was talking about his high five. High fi not high five. High fi you, you, Do you know what a high five? I was talking about porn, but you're talking about something about music, I'm right. sure. Yeah. It, you know, high fi used to be high fidelity. That's what right. they called their stereos back in the day, the high fi Right. And uh, they had tubes in them. And that's what I thought you were talking about. <laughs> no, I was talking about porn tubes. Oh. God, I hope he. Oh God, Anna. Oh God, I hope he's not on, on you porn. I think you know, and I'm not. I think I know he's on YouTube. And what they're doing is, I guess they're taking interesting people from around Donaldsonville, my mm -hmm. hometown. Uh, someone in town decided to take it upon themselves to find interesting people in that town and do their story. Right. <clears throat> I have no idea how many they've done. I have no idea if this is the first one. I really have no idea of anything except that my dad has an hour and 38 minute tome of him talking. <clears throat> now, here's the deal. I watched the first eight and a half minutes. The woman basically said to my dad, where were you born? <laughs> well, <laughs> And then it went from there. And eight and a half minutes later, I'm not quite sure he gave an answer. But that's he like, an only he likes to talk, huh? That's an only child. He literally went back to Italy where he wasn't born. He 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 said, well, I was born in New Orleans, Louisiana. By the way, that's not an only child. That's just somebody who likes to hear themselves talk. Oh, he he can spin a tale. 
he Anna, he started talking about uh, he was born in New Orleans. He had to go there, even though he's from Donaldsonville, because he was he was a preemie and uh, they had to take him. He, his mom went there to deliver because they had a hospital who can handle preemies and on and on and on. It's a lot and, of detail. Yeah. And then he talked about the, the woman didn't ask a second question. He said, you know, my grandmother was from this part of Italy. And my grandfather, my, my father was from that part of Italy and her parents were the Solaris and the this and that. He went off on something that and I'm like sitting there going, I, I said, Serena, you got to come watch this. You got I had this up on a big TV screen, right? Mm -hmm. I said, you got to come. You got to come see what's doing here. Right. And, and by the way, that was the first question. Uh, my younger brother, who's watched the whole thing now, said that um, he goes, yeah, I think she gets three questions out in an hour and 30 minutes. <laughs> and it's just him talking. Just talking and talking and talking. But does he tell good stories? I, yeah, yeah. The, or is he, it like all minutia? As Frankie said, Frankie watched the whole thing. He said, you know, when you listen to it, because we've heard all these stories a thousand times. Right. And I think they're true because they never change. They never get embellished. Right. right. When something is not true. There's an embellishment that happens. Mm -hmm. Right. With him, it stays pretty much in the same ballpark. It, you know, look, it, you know, they say it, it if you're trying to hit right at the pitcher's mound it's hitting somewhere in the infield, the story. Right? right. It's not ending up in the outfield and outside the ballpark. He his okay. story stays somewhat. Similar. Um, and I think age. But but, you know, Frankie says, you know, He's our dad and you hear him, you know, just blabbering on. But he goes, he had a pretty, a pretty interesting life. You know, he played music. You know, he played with people like Fats Domino. He yeah. was a local politician. He, you know, I think it's going to be good that you have that. You're going to be glad that you have that YouTube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, you know, he, he, he grew up in a very poor, impoverished family. You know, they never really made more than minimum wage, but it was important for them to send him to school. And he was the first one to get educated. He was an only child, you know, like you. Um, and only child syndrome is a real thing, man. You guys have it. You, you guys are different. You never have to learn how to play with others. And when I say play with others, I don't mean other human beings. You, you didn't have to learn how to negotiate, and share and be part of, you know, a dynamic with mm -hmm. brothers or sisters or whatever that is. Yeah. Right. Your dynamic was when another friend came over and guess what? At some point, the other friend goes home. Right. If you have a problem with that friend, you go, I'm just not going to see Lucy for a while. That's right. Your daughter's name is Lucy. <laughs> Betty for a while. Yeah, Betty. You don't have a daughter named Betty. She, Betty's you? a real piece of work. What a hoo. You know, what a hoo. <laughs> Betty. Um, but, you know, you, you get I became very I mean, objective because I had to play board games with myself. <laughs> I played card games with myself against myself. And I literally learned how to be completely objective. Okay, you you literally made me do a coffee spit. It's so sad, but that's <laughs> what I did. What, like, what would you play, Stratega? Remember Stratego? Stratego, absolutely Stratego and Othello. Absolutely. Stratego and Othello. absolutely. Okay. No, wait, you play all like, of them. Why didn't you just go to solitaire? That's one where you. Play I did play yourself. solitaire. Okay, let's I can see. deal a mean game of solitaire. I don't have to play it on the computer. I can hand deal it. I know how to do it. All right, Anna, wait, hang on. Did you play Monopoly with yourself? Yes. <laughs> All right. How does that work? Yes. You're the banker and you're also you have to be only, very honest. You have to be an honest banker. You can't you're the cheat. only person in town like you. There's the banker. No, you, you, pay, you play four players. <laughs> Gets even more pathetic. So wait, Anna, you play yeah. four players. Uh huh. Must have taken forever. I was always the shoe like that was my favorite one. OK, so you were the shoe. Yeah. And the race Simple. car driver was like the race Daddy. car driver and the and horse then, and the yeah. horse. And no one. No, no. Betty thing. wasn't there. But <laughs> I don't think you understand. I was a latchkey Daddy. kid and I played board games by myself. And that, that seems uh, uh, that's so sad. It, it, it's so <laughs> it, it was very it was a very quiet. Uh, <laughs> you turned out fairly normal. Yeah. Well, there's a certain independence. It's a whole thing. Now the Dungeons and Dragons thing makes sense to me. 
I only started that later in life, but I do like video games. I've been, I played video games forever. In okay. fact, when I was in seventh grade, I wrote a video game company and I was a beta tester for them back when they, they would send you a video game on a, on a, a, a cas- like a giant thing to go in the Commodore 64. Like it yeah. didn't, there wasn't even floppy disks. It was like pre floppy disks. Anyway, I need to go back. Yeah. All right. So you literally played Monopoly with yourself. Mm-hmm. And that game, four players. That could this take- is also when like you would leave your kids alone. Like, yeah, but that would take four there- or five hours. Mm-hmm. Why didn't you just play you and one other person? I might have. So I probably not- did that too. Okay. How do you think I'm so good with money? I play Monopoly against myself. So what 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 if you lost against yourself? Did did you ever lose? Then the game would be over. I'm sure I did. Were you that honest with it where you saw you beating you? But did I lose or did I win? (laughs) So existential. (laughs) I know. (laughs) Listen, I did what I had to do. That's how I learned how to cook. I had to feed myself. There was nobody there to she had to work. I had to feed myself. I would, the only channel I was allowed to watch was PBS and they would show either Julia Child or the Frugal Gourmet. And so I would watch them make these amazing things and then I would open our fridge and it had no food in it. And so I would have to like figure something out. That's how I literally, I learned to cook from watching cooking shows what, on what PBS when cook? I was little. You know, like um, I know young Bird, kids. Bird's would... eye frozen, some, some vegetable and then like steakums, uh, Uncle Ben's minute rice or whatever. What's a steak? Actually, we had minute rice, not but steakum was like these thin cut frozen pieces of like Arby's, like shaved meats kind of thing called a steakum. You didn't have steakums because you had home cooked meals as a child because you had somebody there to cook you meals. I didn't have that. Right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> steakum. Was it steakums. real meat at least? It was real. Doubtful. Look, looking back. Was it Doubtful. ground? Was it all ground up? No, no, it wasn't it ground. Like it was meat. like it was like our Arby's. So it was shaved. like roast beef, right? Frozen, it's, and you would just thaw it out and yeah, and cook pan. it in the pan. Mm-hmm. And my and, mom came from her mom, which was the first generation that was sold to with convenience foods, and my grandmother was like, "This is so convenient." You know, if my grandparents were still alive today, they subsisted on parquet, margarine, and, you know, whatever, uh, uh, dole fruit rings and like fruit cups and shit like that. They, they had, uh, my mom would make um, a ham steak in the microwave and she would dump brown sugar and pineapple rings on it. Right. And it wasn't until we were in, I was in seventh grade and we had a, German foreign exchange student come live with us. And he was originally from Czechoslovakia and he could cook. He was in high school and he made schnitzel and spetzel and all this Czechoslovakian food that I can't remember the name of. And that was the first time I was like, oh my God, somebody made something for me that was really good. My poor mom, she just didn't know how to cook. We went to McDonald's all the time. Hang on, hang on. Are you looking up Steakums? Yeah, it looks like I'm I'm on the Steakum site. And the photo, the like the cover photo on the front page. Do they still disgusting. sell? Apparently, yeah. Oh God. How well, did they I were bad then? I'm sure they're product. even worse now. It's called sliced steak, 100% Steakums. and 100% delicious. I'm telling you, if you want to know, like the 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 root of what drives me. Number one, we had no money, so if I wanted to enjoy food, I needed to go get some money so we could get decent food. My mom did the best she could, but she was a single mom and she worked all the time. Number two, I was by myself. And so if I wanted anything done, I need to get it done. She didn't, she wasn't there to do anything for me. You know what I mean? Like she couldn't right. again. So that it was a big driver. It's not like, uh, you know, these people come up with like all these family stories of like, Oh, my grandmother was always in the kitchen. If my grandmother was in the kitchen, she was uh, digging something out of the trash that she thought shouldn't have got thrown away because she was a depression baby. And like, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. if you if you threw a quarter of an apple away, she would dig it out and be like, that's a perfectly good apple. Why didn't you save it? And of course, me being a child of the 80s, was like, I don't care. I throw it out. <laughs> being a wasteful little biatch. But, you know. You know, we weren't rich either, but we weren't dirt poor. Um, 
I've often said we were education poor because both of my parents worked and um, they, the sacrifice for, for them was to put us through private school. Yeah. Now, don't think hoity toity folks. I grew up in Donaldsonville, Louisiana, <laughs> private school. So then I go, oh, Mr. Private School with the flip collar. None of that happened at my school. I, I went to the private schools with the flip collar. Yeah. I was the financial aid. So you, I went to one of the top 10 high schools in our country, the boarding schools. So you were <laughs> and like let me tell pretty, you what, they were all like James Spader. Yeah, they were all. It was interesting. It's, it's pretty in pink. Would anyone today even know what that movie is? Uh, I don't know. It, I watched it again with Lucy recently. It didn't really hold up. It holds up for me. I love when Ducky does his thing at the end. You love Ducky. I, love I married Ducky. Ducky. Let's be honest. Yeah, everyone would. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm not gay, but if I were, I'd marry Ducky. <laughs> um, That's nothing to do with anything. No. But so you're uh, saying you would marry my husband who looks just like Ducky. <laughs> I, I, yeah, you know, because um, y- your husband's kind of a cool guy. And um, I think I think we have a lot in common, even though I don't know yeah. him well. Every time I have a conversation with him, like he was thinking about buying a Jeep, an older Jeep. Yeah, he still and, hasn't made a move on that other right, one. And he could take his time because he'll find the right one. Yeah. But that's something I would do. Mm-hmm. You know, like most guys want like a Ferrari and I would go, man, I take a I take another CJ7. I have yeah. one before and um just to kind of on the weekends, get in and go mm-hmm. around a little bit, you know, go around the high school with the girls. He does the like the vintage Porsches, but I don't see him ever buying one of those. The problem with those is I, I like Pain those and ass. Serena likes them too, but just to get one in good shape. Now you're looking at major bucks. Yeah. And yeah, to keep them going would be a pain in the ass and it would be expensive. So I'm, I'm not so sure that that's in my um, anything I would do. But the Jeep is is a vintage uh, Jeep. That's more his style. Yeah, I just was a pick up the mic three times. Like, like if um, if, if I were gay, I, I would, and he was gay, I wouldn't try to force him into anything. Um, I, I would go in that direction. Cool kind of guy. Um, you know what else is cool is Bell Camp, and I'm gonna tell you why they're cool. Anna, you might remember there's some stuff in the Facebook group and there was some stuff going on. And then Anya Fernal did a big, giant um, uh, uh, apology. Now, this had nothing to do with the Bel Campo stuff that you order online, the meat that shows up at your house. Anya Fernald also has a bunch of restaurants around the California area. And um, during the pandemic, one of those restaurants, I think it was the one in Santa Monica, because of uh, the shortage of meat and this and that, all kinds of stuff was going on during the pandemic. And someone let their guard down and they ended up getting meat. It wasn't bad meat. It wasn't tainted meat, but it wasn't of the quality of the other meat of Del Campo. I don't know much more of it than that. I've talked to Anya. She, uh, She may come back on the show in a couple of weeks and talk about it. But the thing I love about Anya and Del Campo is that she went, out. She didn't go make excuses. She went on the internet. I saw this thing on, on, on Instagram and she says, you know what? I need to do better. I'm better than this. And she apologized and said that, you know, um, she took the blame for it and uh, she didn't put it on anyone else. It was only in one store where this meat that wasn't of the same ilk of everything Bel Campo uh, is used to selling. Uh, it didn't happen on their, like I said, on their website. They were still sending out that top tier meat that they they raised right there and everything else. And um, I looked at that and I wrote to Anya and I said, kudos to you. You know, we live in a world where everyone is trying to blame everyone else. And she could have pulled the same old BS and said, you know, COVID and COVID this. Everybody's blaming everything on COVID nowadays. Um, it happened during that time. It happened when some of the food chains were breaking down and someone made a bad decision and she takes full responsibility. I love a company like that. And um, that's why I'm not changing my feelings about Bel Campo. I just did a big order here at my house. And uh, if you guys want to do a big order from belcampo.com, go to Bel Campo, but I check out, put in promo code Vinny, V-I-N-N-I-E for 20% off. If you spend over $100 after the discount, you will also get 
an additional uh, free shipping. That, that's huge when you're ordering, uh, ordering a lot of meat. So you want to do that. <clears throat> Belcampo.com. Uh, you want to put in promo code Vinny for 20% off. And if you spend more than $100 after your discount, free shipping. Belcampo. I love this company now more than ever because of what Anya did. And if, if you want to see what it's like to have balls and own up to something in this world, go to Instagram, look up Bel Campo and look for that apology from Anya. She doesn't flinch. There's not 20 takes. She's looking right into the camera and she's apologizing. I love someone like that. And um, I consider her a friend. And uh, uh, kudos to you, Anya, and kudos to Bel Campo for making everything right. Belcampo.com, promo code Vinny. And um, what are we talking about today? Well, I wanted to ask, because uh, I'm getting this question all the time. And by the way, it's a great idea when you guys tweet us questions, because I usually copy and paste them into my little document. But it's even better when you just happen to time it right before Vinny and I record. Now, when Vinny and I record, we don't know. So you just happen yeah. to be Laura Whalen. You won the Friday podcast jackpot because your question is going to be featured. Um, there you go. What's her name? So Laura Whalen? Laura Whalen. Mm -hmm. I remember her from the internets. Remember Jill Whelan? You know who Jill Whelan is? The name's familiar. She was an actress. Oh, oh, Jill Whelan, the actress. Yeah, I thought it was like, is that a fan? <laughs> no, Jill Whelan was... Yes. Um, she was the girl that was, was on a Little um, House of the Prairie, was she? No, no, no. She was on the Love Boat. She was Captain Boat. Steubing's daughter on the Love she Boat. She was Vicky. She was Vicky Steubing, yeah. Yeah. I'm looking at pictures of another. By the way, rest in peace, Gavin McLeod. He just died. When? Like a couple of days ago. Over okay. the weekend. Here's the crazy thing. I was telling Serena a few days ago because I watched Mary Tyler Moore. Like right. it just came on last week. And every now and then I'll catch a love boat when I can, because it reminds me of college. I, I watched it in college when they were in reruns. Um, and I said, I said, you know, everybody on that show, Rhoda is dead. Mary, Mary died. Um, uh, you know, Ted know. Knight dead. The only one, uh, uh, Phyllis, you know, who, you know, she just died not long ago. She was yes. like in her late nineties. Um, the woman who played Phyllis, you know, on and on and on. And I said, the only two that are allowed is uh, Mr. Grant and, you know, Captain Steubing. Yeah. McLeod. And he, yeah. oh, how old was he, Anna? Do we have I don't know. I don't know anything. It? I just, I was in passing and I heard somebody say, we were out at a place and they said, Gavin McLeod died. I went, what? Oh, no. Can I say I this mean, about Joe Whelan? Yes. She's held up. Oh, yeah. 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 I'm looking I at it right now. Vicky, Vicky's held up. She's a good looking woman. Oh, he was 90 when he died. OK, I mean, he, that, he, he had, had a, a pretty good run. He had a run. Yeah. You, you, you know, you, that was so a cute. Thing. Remember, I, I'll tell you He's something a handsome man. He was uh, you know, he went gay for a while. And when you say, wait, Vin, what are you talking about? You don't go gay for a while. He went gay and then went and then decided he wasn't gay. So he I, I, I don't know how I know that story. Can we look that up, Anna? No, how do I look that up? Gavin McLeod went gay for a yeah, while. Yeah, look up Gavin McLeod went gay for a while. You can Google that. I'm, I'm very busy looking at Joe Whelan right now, who <laughs> I, I think I'm a little bit in love with. Gosh, she's she's kind of hot, Anna. Yeah, I can use me some of this. Wow, he went straight from the Mary Tyler Moore show, 168 episodes, to the Love Boat, 249 episodes. When you said he went straight, I was like, what, huh? <laughs> they actually wrote that? <laughs> so, Mary Tyler Moore started I'm like looking, in I'm looking under his personal. 1968. He's it, a very, very nice. Important. We need he has to a very nice write-up in Variety, but I don't know if they're going to talk about him going gay for a little while. Yeah, I think he was gay, and then... Um, I remember watching a porn once and it was it was about the love boat and the captain was Captain Stabbin. Get it? 
Cap His dick would stab, stab the vagina. Yeah, that's what they would do. I think. I think that's what they Hold do. on. He married Joan Rootvik, and he had two sons from 1955 to 1972. Then he married actress Patty Kendig in 74. They divorced in 82, but remarried in 85. I think that was... Um, and they the went evangelical Christian. I think that was the time when he, he went and... I don't... According to this, he went evangelical Christian, which meant he was probably covering up as gay. Yeah. Yeah, that's how you cover gay. Yeah. Just, just pray the gay away. Yeah. You know, they used to try to do that when people were gay. Oh, they, yeah. They would try to beat the that's gay it. out of them by sending them to, like, Christian camp. Yeah. Right. That's a, that's a whole other show. OK, can we ask Laura Whalen's question? By the way, we we don't condone praying the gay away. We condone being gay fully and openly. Can we get them as a sponsor? Gay away. <laughs> gay away. 20 percent off promo code Vinny. Get gay away. Also on a convenient pump spray. <laughs> that was really good. Listen to you doing voiceover. I'm proud of you. Convenient pump spray. Get it? See what I did there? Yeah, I know. Yeah. All right. All right, Anna. Laura uh, Whalen says, and by the way, I get some version of this question on the daily, in the clubhouses, in the Facebook groups. Because probably because I am dairy free now, even though half my recipes have dairy and half don't. Let me I, like to, Donald, I like to give options. As mentioned for the thousandth time, she's very free. Well, here's why I mention it, Vinny. Mm -hmm. For five years, I've been supposedly dairy free. <laughs> I've been told I have to be dairy free in order to help my autoimmune. Okay. Have I gone fully dairy free? No, no, not until January of this year. And now you're dairy free. Now I'm dairy free. So you're dairy free AF. Yeah, that's what yeah. the kids would call it. Yeah, Dairy free. D F A F. Yeah. Um, I am N S N G N D A F. Right you need to go get not non dairy. A All right. So D F. No sugars, no grains, no dairy. A F. All right. Anna, yeah. you need to go right now register D F A F. A F. D F A F. Yeah. D F A F. Go. Listen, now. I'm having a hard enough time managing just eat happy. Um, okay. So, so here's the deal. So back in 2014, when I was told by the doctors, you need to stop having this because it's making you sick. I, and I didn't. And then, but I started to write more. So my second book has even more dairy-free alternatives because every now and then somebody would mention, you know what? my kid can't have dairy either. You know, I'm doing NSNG, but I've noticed I feel better without dairy. Like every right. now and then somebody would mention something, but for the most part, I was met with complete just derision and uh, dismissal, right? From doctors. Uh, no, 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 no. From our group, from our fan group. They're like, what? Why don't you just have the cheese? Just have the sour cream. And I was like, I want to, <laughs> trust me. What happens to you, Anna? Uh, uh, it it does the same thing to me that gluten does. So it it incites the autoimmune response in my celiac. Got it. So Got thinking it. that I've been clean for all these years, I haven't been, if that makes sense. That makes and sense. what I wound up doing when I went NSNG was creating an almost over-reliance on dairy. I would have cheese for a snack all the time. I would, uh, you know, I love the full fat yogurt and I love the, I love the dairy, right? Right. And uh, I wouldn't use it, it, you know, in moderation. Dairy was like one of my food groups. Got it. So now it's the trend. Everybody's like, I've plateaued. What do I do? And the first thing everybody tells everybody else in the groups, try cutting out dairy. Mm. Mm -hmm. Especially okay. with women. So whether it's right or wrong, listen, I totally agree with the experimenting, get your blood work done, see what it's, you know what I mean? Who knows? I have a different thing. I have an autoimmune thing. I would not quit dairy if I didn't have to, because it's a wonderful food. Right. E eggs are the same thing. I can't have eggs. Okay. So I eat a lot of meat and vegetable. That's what I eat. 
And then if I really need to put some sort of, I'll, I'll use some of the dairy-free products, but I'll, uh, I'll, you know, I'll use coconut cream or coconut oil or something like that. And, or avocado puree is nice to thicken things. Anyway, I have a ton of tri- tips and tricks in the second book for that. So Laura Whalen asks, I'm working to, quote, tweak my diet in hopes of uncovering why I'm stuck on a plateau. Step one, cut dairy. What time frame for this test do you recommend? Two weeks, month? Any specific podcasts or articles I should reference? The first thing I would look at is being stuck on the plateau. Um, you know, look, the number one phone call I get is, you know, when they start, I always say, I know where they're heading when they start with the apology. Hey, man, I'm not giving up NSNG. I still believe in you and all of this. But I've hit a plateau. And I'll go, okay, talk about it. Well, I was 320 pounds. I'm now 260. You know, I've lost a good, you know, 60 pounds. I still have another 60 to go. And um, I'm not, I haven't lost weight. I'll go, okay, how long has it been? Two weeks. Okay. It's a significant amount of time not to lose weight. What else are you Wait, doing? Two weeks they've been plateauing? Right. They think that's a plateau. Oh, uh, I'm talking about point. people who are plateauing for like six months a year. Right. Well, I'm just telling you the phone call okay. I get. Okay. In case anybody hears themselves in that phone call. It's two weeks, sometimes a month. Sometimes you hear two months. That's about the longest. And um, they go, I'm, I'm, I'm still doing it, man. I'm still doing it. I swear to God, I'm still doing it. And I will start asking questions. And I've talked about this on the show before, and I will talk about it again. And, and Jill, what's her name? Laura Whalen. Laura. Sorry, I'm still thinking Jill Whelan. <laughs> Laura, let me write that down. I'm actually going to tweet her back that you're answering the question right now. Yeah. <clears throat> Before you start just pulling out dairy, because you read someone on the internet saying, just pull out dairy, right? You can't just start taking willy nilly advice from anyone and everyone. Because when I do these consults, it's always the same thing. It's, I'm still doing it 100%. I'm still doing this. I'm still doing that. Take me through your diet. And they'll take me through the perfect diet. And by the time I get off the phone with them, an hour later, when I get down to the truth, when people start telling the truth, and by the way, they're not lying, they're not trying to lie to me. They're not, they, they, they but you know, you'll say, well, what about nuts? Well, yeah, man, I'll, I'll have a handful of nuts. How often? Not twice a day. Twice a day? Just one hand? One hand? How much is one hand? Well, you know, we have them in the office or I have them at home as pandemic and, you know, nuts are around. My kids like them. So is it more than two handfuls? Now, sometimes, you know, if I'm peckish, I might get three hands full. But that's about it. And then they'll go, what about peanut? And they'll tell me peanut butter, right? I mean, that's fat, right? Yeah. When you start getting into it now, is there anything wrong with peanut butter? As far as losing weight? If you have once one little spoonful of it, I guess not. I wouldn't eat peanut butter. It's inflammatory. But that now you're mentioning nuts and then they'll go, Oh, you know, every now and then I'll have dairy, you know, oh, what kind of dairy yogurt, you know, as a matter of fact, my wife buys the vanilla. Do you have that one? Well, yeah, that's, you know, you can't really taste the sugar. In. And, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm making, I'm making this up, but this is the common right. stuff I hear. And then when you do lap number three with them, it's like, um, yeah, beef jerky is okay, right? If I, if I get the good stuff, yeah, where are you getting it? From the, you know, when I stop to get gas, guess what? The good stuff is not where you stop to get gas. No. It's very difficult to find good beef jerky. Very difficult. I've been playing around with beef jerky for a long time because I've been trying to develop a really good one. Most of this stuff tastes like cake icing is on the meat. I'm not kidding. Some of the highest you know, number one brands out there, the reason they get you guys to eat the stuff over and over is because they're slathering it with sugar. Oh, wait, I can't have beef jerky. Yeah, you start adding the beef jerky with the vanilla yogurt with 
the, the nut butters with the nuts, on and on and on. Before you know it, you have a problem. And as soon as you cut that out, the problem goes away. Now I'll say this coffee, this is uh, it's probably my third or fourth coffee today. Let's see. Anna, tell me if you can see what's in that cup. Oh, geez. Well, you spilled, spilled it on your stuff. It's black coffee. Black coffee. I just spilled it all over my board just to prove a point. So this is how podcasts get ruined. All right. So Anna, here's what we got to do. Do a Villa Capelli ad. I, I got to clean up this before. <laughs> you need to clean that up. up. I, yeah, let me go get. So do Okay, a here's Capelli the ad. deal. I just talked to Steven um, and he is sending some stuff stateside. So right this second, Villa Capelli might be out of oil. But what they let me just double check, though, because I'm going to go down this rabbit hole with you guys. Villa Capelli has been a long time. Oh, well, oh, the 750 milliliter bottle is still in stock. Get it now. Get it now while you can. Use the discount code Vinny, V-I-N-N-I-E, to get 10% off your order. So you can get the little on-the-go little bottle and the, the 750 milliliter. You need to get that because it is so good and so wonderful. Um, so go ahead and get those oils, but hold on. But wait, there's more. He still has the almond flour in stock, and the almond flour is a better price than what's at the grocery store. It is 2.2, I think it's a kilo, uh, what is it? Hold on. I'm going to find out. One kilogram is 2.2 pounds at 1650, which is basically at my grocery store, the almond flour is $10 a pound. So it's less than $10 a pound. So you got to get a hold of that. He's sending all sorts of stuff stateside. The Italian herb sea salt is wonderful and use those for grilling, like use the Italian herb sea salt for grilling. And then there's the artisanal uh, red wine vinegar is fantastic at the bay leaves the eight year balsamic aged balsamic vinegar is incredible. You guys just, just trust me on this. Get a hold of this Villa Capelli stuff. He is about to send, send a lot more stuff stateside, but it won't be here for another six weeks. So make sure that you order that 750 milliliter tin, use the discount code Vinny V I N N I E. There's been a whole change. You know, you know, Paul rest in peace passed away uh, a little over a year ago on May 4th of 2020 and uh, we miss him dearly. And Stephen has undergone, un undergone a whole bunch of changes within the business structure in order for him to be able to take over the business. And uh, he's going to, he's doing it. He's running it hard. And he's also going to create, we have some Eat Happy Kitchen Marinara gift baskets coming out for the NSNG audience. So as soon as he gets all that stuff, state size, great. But I'm telling you, if you're out, get that 750 milliliter bottle now because it will sell out and about six weeks he'll have the three liter tins over here and and then we start with harvest again soon and then we do it all over again folks nice. use the discount code vinnie v-i-n-n-i-e get 10 percent off your order okay uh sorry about that but folks when you pour black coffee <laughs> under your board it can that really in. stressed me out i'm glad you were able to yeah clean I, I had to take care of it right away and by the way it was seeping in under the board i didn't want to have a shart um so we were talking a about a, sh a shart Short, not a short. A short. You just have to know when you say the word short, it sounds like shart short. just because of the way you talk. Yeah. And it's adorable, yeah. but it short is what you said. Yeah. I saw a license plate the other day and it was short. And I went, How did he get that license plate? How did they do they not so, know? At the yeah, same yeah, Virginia, they're like, like I love it. Like, oh, short. That's a funny word. Yes. I, 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 like, when, I like when they get. You're like every now and then you'll see when they get a cuss like BS or something. You're like, yeah. oh, well, they got away with it. Yeah, they got away with it. So, yeah. all right, getting back to Laura's question. Yes, um, I was showing my coffee, right? Yeah. And you know, as we know, because I just poured it all over my expensive board, it's black. I drink one cup of coffee every day that has cream in it. Mm, that's. That's not exactly true. Uh, sometimes I will make a coffee that I'll take with me if I'm going hiking or biking or kayaking or something where I know I'm going to be out there for a long time. And I may put cream in that. But lately, I've been putting my nut butter in there, especially if it's mm -hmm. hot. If it's cold coffee, it doesn't mix. But if I start with high coffee and it mixes up and I shake it up really well in this container right here, I'll shake. I have a few of these. I'll shake it up really well in one of these. And then, um, it, you know, I can drink it as a, a nutritional thing. But in general, I only have one coffee every day with heavy cream. Now, 
Is it bad to have heavy cream all day? This is another thing I hear when people are having trouble, Anna. Uh, a losing lot of heavy weight. cream. They'll say, I start every morning with, because, you know, they're trying to serve too many kings. I start every morning with a bulletproof coffee. And then a few hours later, I have some eggs and bacon. And then blah, 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 blah. Folks, there's nothing you can eat with impunity. If you eat too much fat, notice you won't get fat. And you won't but you get, will plateau. You will plateau. You're not going to get fatty liver disease. You're not going to get uh, type two di di type two di the liver type two diabetes. You're not going to get any of those problems. But what you may get is a plateau. Right, right. Because your body is using the fat you're taking in, it never has to get to a subcutaneous fat. Right. So this does not mean you have to be in a calorie deficit. But if you bring too much sand to the beach, you're going to have a problem. So then how do you know? You just oh, eat till you're full? How do you know? Well, you stop losing weight. You just cut back a little bit, not a lot. You don't have to go, oh, I got to restructure all this. I need to go do OMAD. I need to go, you know, I, I have but to But that's have where people go. They go immediately go to a fasting right. they, place they, they or they immediately go to out. restriction. And, right. and, and then, and guess what? They're all on Clubhouse every week saying, oh my God, I'm freaking out because this, that. And I don't blame them. I get it. It's a natural way to be like, yeah, because uh -oh, now I'm it, doing something wrong and now I need to be punished. Look, when guys like me and a few others started doing this 10, 12 years ago, it was just us saying, look, this is what you do. Now, everybody's a fucking expert. You know, I see stuff out there. People, I'm a keto coach. I'm, you know, I'm a this coach. I'm a that coach. I'm coaching. I'm co everybody who lost 50 pounds became a coach. Not a good idea. Not a good idea because they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. This is a real problem, right? And they're on Clubhouse and they're here and they're there. They're not experts. They're what they're talking about. I get people with, you know, telling me stuff. I'm doing this. I'm doing, who told you to do that? Well, I saw this thing online. This guy's doing it online. I got a nephew who never loses weight. He pumps down like a madman. He still has a gut. Every other week he's doing no mad and oh mad and this mad and that mad and this week, I'm a red pill. That week, I'm a blue pill. These kids are getting caught up in all kinds of shit, and they're spewing all this stuff out, and they're getting people to listen to it. And one week, he's on C4, and the next week, he's on this, and he's on that supplement. Calm down, folks. Calm the F down. Please. You're not doing yourself any favors. You can't do anything with impunity. You can almost have coffee with impunity, but if you have too much of that, you're going to get the jitters because you've now had too much caffeine, right? You put cream in every cup of coffee, guess what? You're going to have a problem. And, you know, oh, wait, I can't, I can't do dairy. Really? Because you, we talked about that woman, Gabrielle, that I did a consult with years ago. She was doing... She was doing a cup of a mug of coffee like this every day. This is probably this holds probably 15 ounces, big giant cup. Look how big this cup is. She was doing half the cup of cream and the other half coffee. She was drinking that before she went to work. She had to drive 90 minutes to two hours for work every day. So she would take a 16 ounce tumbler. Let's say this is 40 ounces, but let's say this is a 16 ounce tumbler. She was putting half cream, heavy cream. And That's the rest putting a whole coffee. pack of heavy cream in there. So she was doing heavy cream comes in 16 ounce packages, right? Well, she was putting eight ounces of cream in here every day. Heavy cream, heavy whipping cream. No, if that's it's 40 ounces, four ounces, she was here. putting 16 ounces of no, heavy cream no. in there. She wasn't. She was 40 doing, ounces of coffee. No, no, this is 40 ounces. Her thing we we determined was 16 ounces. Oh, OK, got it. So she was putting she eight was, ounces in this. So eight ounces, by the way, is a cup. That's a cup of heavy cream. Four ounces in this. And she was having breakfast every morning and she okay. couldn't understand why she was but not losing weight. Hold on, Vinny. Then if you're telling people to cut that down, that is almost the same as cutting out dairy, because guess what's going to happen when they cut out dairy? They're going to stop doing shit like that. And so that's why no, I Anna, constantly you're, you're hear saying, you're saying it backwards. But I'm saying I constantly hear, you know what? I didn't know what to do. I was plateauing for like six months. Somebody suggested cutting out dairy and nuts. I cut it out. All of a sudden I dropped 15 pounds in a month. Right. So, so it is happening. But you're saying. 
They never had to cut the dairy out all they completely. Never had to cut, look, you're saying you're you doing, don't have to cut out completely. Anna, if, you if just if have to cut out the excess here and another two ounces there every fucking morning. You, you're talking 10 okay, ounces well, of cream. Listen, this lady doing eight ounces of heavy cream, that's an outlier. People aren't doing that on the regular. Anna, if you put Are cream they? in every cup of coffee and you're doing, some people do, like me, I do a couple of pots a day. If I put cream in every cup and I eat red meat for lunch and I eat eight to 10 eggs a day, and I would get, I would stop. I, I would probably gain weight. It's too much. With all the exercise I do, I would probably start gaining weight. There is nothing you can do with impunity is the point I'm trying to get to. But what you're not saying is how much is too much. It depends on the person. Okay. You see, I can't look at you and say, Anna, this is, but the people who do the 30 minute consults with me, you don't even need a whole hour. The 30 minute consults. I know people, Oh, uh, you make money on that. Yeah. I got to make a living somewhere. Would you do the consult? Why do you feel, why do you feel like you have to apologize or explain making a living? Yeah. Yeah, That's bullshit. Don't right. don't do that. You're right. But when people call and we do the consults and I can listen to their individual situation, I can fix it. I can fix right. it. Yeah. And that's what I do every day, all day. Yeah. I have a book full of consults I do every day and I enjoy doing it. It's my it's my favorite thing to do. I get to I get to coach people. I get to be part of it. I You know, people are learning how to do marathons and, and triathlons and riding a bike and for the most part, they're learning how to start losing weight again because they hit a plateau. And you can't say, well, how much is too much? Because you, Anna, who's five, 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 six, is not going to be the same as Lauren, your husband in the other room. It's not going to be the same as me. It's not going to be the same as Serena. It's not going to be the same as, as, as Kurt Lapeer. It's just not. We're all I'm, not even, I'm not correcting you anymore in his name. Kurt. Mm -hmm. um, so, Laura, I will say this. If you do want to quit dairy, you want to give it a shot. Number one, why don't you schedule a half hour with Vinny and just see. Number two, as far as podcasts, articles or anything to reference, I mean, we again, we don't know the ins and outs of your situation on Twitter. Are you drinking milk? Are you having full fat dairy? Are you having the, I, I, I know your name and I know you've been around for a while, so I know you're probably st you're sticking majorly to plan. So and I will say I. I'm all right with doing experiments. I think it's good to try and see who knows. Maybe you didn't even realize how much you were consuming until you cut it all out and you have a huge withdrawal and you're like, oh, I just want some cheese. And then you go a month without it. And then you see, oh, OK, because people do they all the time. They say, like, I did it. I went for a month and it just really kicked it in. Great. That's awesome. Then, you know. And now Gravy Gate, where we will learn what Anna's doing with her gravy. <laughs> gravy gate gravy gate or just gravy news give me gravy update oh gravy update yeah i was calling it gravy gate because you're not in watergate Everybody yeah i know they, they like to do that yeah um gravy gate <laughs> i don't know i'm not shaming anybody for wanting to quit dairy or nuts or whatever because i feel like those are the ones that people do overdo and they don't even, and they won't and they won't no, no no but i'm saying they won't they won't admit it to themselves that's the number one thing you have to admit it to yourself so if you're paying Vinny and you're having a consult with him and he's got to take three laps to get you to admit that you had an entire bag of nuts in two days then you know what i mean it's like you know but you need him to tell you but you know you know right Correct. Are you doing your 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 nut crusher? Yeah, because I'm getting excited here. I need to calm down. He's doing hand exercises. Yeah. Um, here's here's what's going on with the gravy. This is a strange we, hand, Anna, right here. We are a stranger. A, Got to keep the stranger strong. He's squeezing here. a thing. It, looks, it sounds like a duck collar. There it is. That's my favorite noise. Now do it really fast, like a bunch of times. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Anna. There we go. Oh, yeah. Oh. That's what happens when I talk about the gravy. Yeah. Tell me about the gravy, Anna. Okay. The gravy that Vinny's referring to is Eat Happy Kitchen Marinara. We are manufacturing two new flavors. On fr The day this comes out, it's getting manufactured. The Puttanesca and the Pink Crema. 
Will they be up for sale on the site? Hopefully within the next week. Yes, because what we need to do is we have to get those jars in the fulfillment house, measure them for shipping because we've created entirely new packaging that's going to cut down on the shipping costs, which I'm thrilled about because unfortunately we're still at a point where we have to charge for some shipping and I hate that, but we've streamlined the packaging, custom designed it, made these cute boxes, yada, yada, yada. So we're going to have the marinara. We're going to have the pink crema. We're going to have the puttanesca. Now, here's what I found out today, Vinny. Go, well, Anna, you, you're calling it pink crema? Why don't you just call it pink gravy like the rest of the Italians? Because we're not calling it that. So if you go to eathappykitchen.com, hopefully that will be up soon. <laughs> we're being filmed. Uh, make all oh, the yeah. jerk off motions you want. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Oops. So, um, you will be able to get a hold of those. You'll, you can get a variety pack. You can get, you can just, you can pour all the sauce on you, Vinny, just like what Vinny's doing right now for you too. He's pouring jars of sauce on his face. Um, <laughs> uh, it's gonna, we just found out there's a nationwide jar shortage. So we actually, oh, come we, on. we thought really? we were going to be able to, yeah, we thought we were gonna be able to manufacture 3000 jars of each flavor. We what just happened found out, to big jar. Oh, we're in the wrong business. We should have been in big jar. I'm telling you, I'm, it's 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 everybody who does their food in jars. You tr trust me. Actually, that's why we're developing so that next year we can start to do Tetra Pak because I am I'm about over jars not being able to get them. When you do get them, they break when they get shipped to people. It's very it's very disturbing. You drop them, take them off the grocery store shelf, crash, big mess. Clean up on aisle four. Um, so I am very excited to move over to Tetra Pak, but for now we're still doing the jars, and um, we're we got. Guys, we got enough to do about 1,400 of each flavor instead of the 3,000 of each flavor. I thought we were going to be, get That's to do 2,000, but 1,400. Yep. That's it. And it's all because of jars. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, there's so many supply chains, man, that, that have been screwed up it's because of crazy. COVID and everything. It else. is Manufacturing is going through the roof. I don't know that manufacturing or the, or, or the food business has seen uh, i'm saying food manufacturing not restaurants obviously they really suffered but food Anna, manufacturing went through the do, you know you won't be able to, you know the little pucks you put in your pool the little chlorine pucks yeah you won't be able to get those this summer you're gonna yeah. have to put chlorine in with with your do you know about that i have a saltwater pool so i'm glad about that so, oh you're good but, so you're good but the yeah. chlorine stuff mm -hmm. uh the fact that the one place that makes that nationwide it burned to the ground the, the puck oh so, like the like the chip. Yeah. So, you know, you, you will get the little disc that you just put in the skimmer and, and it just does your whole pool. Right. That's done. You got to this summer. We're going to all be going old school, just sprinkling the stuff in, which I'm happy with because growing up, that's I had to take care of a pool and that's what we did. I mean, yeah. These are real problems. These are real and, problems. No, there's you know, all sorts of things that there's shortages oh, on right now. Components to build. You know, we we, we have to build shelves. I, mean, I, I got yeah. competition. Oh, lumber, up. lumber, copper, and iron are very. Lumber is the worst. Hard to get right now. I yeah. mean, you can get it, but now the prices have tripled. Uh, the the price doubled on my corrugated too. Really? I literally, I waited. I waited ten days longer than I should have to print boxes, and the and the price went up like a crazy amount. Everything is just off yeah. the charts. It's just crazy. Like Ugh. prices usually go up once a year with stuff. They go up every month. Yeah. With, no, it's crazy. With, supply, with crazy. commodities and supplies. Well, let's hope it all calms down because. Uh, um, I want to just real quick, because I know we're going to close out this show. Sure. Uh, I'm, I'm tracking today and I haven't tracked in a while, like literally years. And I was like, I'm going to I'm going to track. And just see what does that mean? Uh, food and exercise. I haven't used the thing. And the reason why I'm tracking is because I'm about to wear a continuous glucose monitor. So I wanted to start inputting and getting in the habit. And then when I figure out this continuous glucose, I'm going to have it for two weeks and do like an experiment. Right. Because you know how I like to do the experiments. Uh, folks, she's talking about a CGM, a continuous a CGM. Yeah, CGM. That's right. Um, and I tell people, you can't lie. It's, it's, you know, it's like looking at what your liver is seeing. It's all right. happening in real time. So I just started to input stuff. And today, he, well, here's one thing that's upsetting me. And I know that we shouldn't care about calories, but here's what's bothering me. Mm -hmm. 
when I put in the exercise and it doesn't like I put the bike erg app from concept Two. you know, the erg data app from concept Two. right? It didn't, it reported it as only one calorie burned for 30 minutes and it bothers me. And I know we shouldn't care, but it bothers. And this is why I don't track by the way, because this kind of shit makes me crazy and I want the data to be correct. Okay, wait, hang on, Anna. Um, and I've gone down the rabbit hole of trying to figure out why the bike erg is not tracking calorie, even though my height and weight is in there. I, I can, you went for 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Where was your heart rate? Do you know? Oh, I kept it in zone two. Uh, you probably burned the 30 minutes. Zone and two. I was doing so you know every RPM? two minutes I did there. Yeah, I stuck. I stayed at at seventy two, and then every two minutes I would do thirty seconds at ninety two. Okay, um, so you pretty probably, leisurely, and then would pump it up. You burned between one hundred and fifty and one hundred and seventy five calories. Great, we'll call it one fifty. Probably closer to one fifty. Yeah. Yeah, in an hour you would have burned around three hundred. Okay, that makes I'm, sense. I'm getting ready to get on my erg. Um, as, soon as, as soon as I upload the show and send it off to Bill, uh, I'm getting on my uh, bike. So what's interesting to me is that, you know, it says that I should have 1,798 calories a day. I haven't looked at calories and counting calories in literally almost a decade. Right, and you should not, but go on. And so far I've had 686 calories today. So far today, I've had 37 grams of protein, eight grams of carbs, and 55 grams of fat. And that includes the ultra fat I was eating at the beginning of the show. Can you tell us what you've eaten today? To yeah, get sure. To those numbers? Mm -hmm. I had double French coffee from purecoffeeclub.com. Yum. With a tablespoon of coconut oil whipped into it. See, here's the thing. Because I don't have dairy, and nothing is as good as heavy cream is, Fuck almond milk, fuck oat milk, fuck coconut milk. I just whip in the coconut oil. And uh, and that's where it is. I had oh, I did put a scoop of um the the collagen. I put a scoop right. of the collagen in the coffee. Uh, I had a cooked hamburger patty. Me too. That's what I had for lunch. I had a big giant one left over from yesterday from, you know, the barbecue because it was, um, you know, yeah, did, it was left over the for the barbecue. Yeah, exactly. The grilling. So I had one of those and, uh, you know, I eat it cold cause I'm weird. Oh, uh, um, I, I had an up. epic bison bar and I had an ultra fat and that's all I've had time to eat today. That sounds about right. The calories. Yeah. So I won't, I won't eat till dinner time and I'm going to have chicken thighs. I'm going to do it in some white balsamic. So there'll be some carbs in that. I'm not worried about it. Right. I'll have a salad and I was going to do a uh, airy cover with some shallots and that'll be my dinner. So I'll put that in, but actually I don't think I'm going to get to those calories today. Oh, you'll make it. Uh, up and I am not hungry. Uh, that's fine. That's fine. You know. But when I am hungry, I will eat. I'll eat a whole avocado. I'll eat. You know what I mean? Like I've learned when you're hungry, you need to eat. Right. And I've also learned when you increase your exercise, you're going to get hungrier. And that you need to eat. Yeah. I, oh, I'm going to have I am going to have some strawberries tonight. Why? And here's here's why. Because the man brought them from the farm that makes the, that, that grows the best strawberries. And they so are the, wait, you didn't mention before, but the man is bringing them over. Yeah. That's well, great. he already brought them over. He brought them this weekend. Uh, folks, I want to close out by saying that uh, Anna's book Eat Happy was used as a prop in a model home. Somewhere That's right. in, the country. <laughs> in North Carolina. In North Carolina. They, somebody tweeted that that was so nice to see. Yeah. And by the way, whoever tweeted that I, I hope you get a nice new home. Yeah. And maybe the book will come with it. Uh, that's number one. Number two. Um, uh, if you're a real estate agent, that's the gift you should give to people when they buy their new home. Yeah, eat happy. I think we gave a bunch of them away at one time early on as gifts. It was a nice housewarming. Uh, Serena was selling houses in LA and uh, she gave them, gave them out. 
Um, so that, that's pretty cool. I like that. Yeah, that was nice to see. Thank yeah. you for tweeting that to me. Whoever tweeted that, I'm going to find out. Uh, um, uh, uh, it was Blake. Blake. All right, Blake. Thanks, Blake. Yeah, thanks, man. You're pretty cool, Blake. All right, folks, uh, you know what to do. We all go shopping on Amazon. Before you go to Amazon, go to VinnyTortoris.com, click through the banner, puts coal on the fire, gets our train down the track. We also have a super fan page, and um, um, I do that because Amazon does not give us the percentage they used to give us, and it costs a lot to run the show. I appreciate when you guys go and do that. Um, I've noticed some pretty cool donations uh, lately. Um, shout out to Chris Robinson, uh, who's been uh, Robinson's Wheel Works in California. Uh, saw a very generous donation from him the other day. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. And and every one of you guys, uh, I might start picking one out every week and because I look at them every day. Yeah. Um, some people do, you know, $5 once, sometimes $5 recurring, $10, $20. And then sometimes people will send me the amount of, God, I hope he, I don't think he could have possibly have lost the amount of weight he sent me in money. <laughs> um, but some people send me, um, you know, like if they lost 100 pounds, they'll send $100, that kind right. of thing. Um, whenever I see $58 or 63, I know it's someone who yeah. lost that much weight. That's to get awesome. to their goal. Um, so it's always kind of neat. And I appreciate you guys doing that. And um, also, Anna Vacino has two cookbooks out there, Eat Happy and Eat Happy 2. Um, go get true. these books. Um, we have them both here. We cook out of both of them. Don't come to me online and go, hey, man, I'm doing an s and but I'm getting pretty tired of just eating steaks. Which, by the way, yeah, you must eat a lot of steak because I hardly ever get tired of eating steaks. I've never gotten tired of eating steaks. I, I, eat, steak I eat a lot of steaks. Um, I do get tired of eggs. That's why you could do them 20 different ways and then you can fix that problem. Um, but Anna, um, Anna also has Eat Happy Kitchen. She's now got three. By the time this comes out, she's got three different sauces. She's got the marinella, marinella, marinara. She's got the puttanesca and she's got the uh, pink sauce or as yeah. Italians call it the pink gravy. Yeah. Um, so go check it all out. Um, did I cover? I've also everything? got the, cl I've got the clubhouses up there too. If you click on my blog, did you do one this uh, week? Anna? I did. I did with a lady named uh, Molly McLaughlin. We need to have her on the show. She's a sleep expert and mm. uh, she does a lot of work with low carb people and sleep. She was a smart lady and she's really cute. You'll like her. <laughs> I'm looking it up right now. Is She's she related to uh, Sarah McLaughlin? No, spelled differently. Like Glock, like the gun. All right. So McLaughlin, MC. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then G L O C K. Mm -hmm. I L I N. Yep. S uh, sleep is a skill, is her site. Let's see, we'll what, see. see what comes You'll up. You'll see. She's really pretty. Sleep is a skill. I'm the, and I think she's really pretty because she gets really good sleep. <laughs> Oh, she is kind of smoke show. I've seen her around, I think. Yeah, she's a nice lady. She's very smart. Yeah, I've yeah, had her I've on tape. Her I'm putting that up in a few. Yours is up now. You can hear the video. Oh, what, what's her What's her expertise, uh, Anna? Is she a doctor? Or? I don't know. She just knows about sleep. She's a coach. Okay. Um, we'll find out who she is. But yeah, yeah. she's she's a bit of a. But I'm doing show. the club. I'm doing one. With, you know, Mila Furman, right? From the group, yeah, 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 she's yeah, a yeah. chef. She's yeah, going to be she's on this week. All right. And then whenever you can come back, come whenever back. You want me, man? Great. Whenever you, you want. Clubhouses, me. and if you guys need clubhouse invite invites, just go to the Eat Happy Facebook group. I know I have like seven left. A bunch of people have them. Get up in it. Okay, there you have it, Anna. Yeah. We're going to close out the show. You ready? Let's do it. Let's close it out. Okay, on, on behalf of Anna Vocino, my name is Vinny Tortorich. Put life into living and do it with enthusiasm. <laughs>